Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today I'll be painting some ink and wash Christmas ornaments, which will be mounted on wood blanks in a decoupage faux resin style. I just love that glassy, glossy, dewy finish. It just never gets old to me. These ornaments are done in the same way as my painted Beatrix Potter spring ornaments and my painted snowman ornaments. So if you want to see more examples, including the gluing, sanding, and sealing steps, you can check out videos for those ornament projects too. Thanks for parking your brushes here and let the epic art adventures begin. I ended up painting a hen and a rooster because one of my friends collects rooster decor, so I thought I'd paint her a rooster ornament based off a Mackenzie Child's rooster sculpture that she probably has. And while I was at it, I did the hen for her sister to make it a nice pair for two very special Christmas gifts. I'm using BFK Reeves cotton rag screen printing paper, which is soft and thin at 90 pound weight and lovely for ink and wash artwork. Because it's so soft and thin, it's great for mounting on wood, metal, or glass blanks. I used a black Zig Rider marker for the ink lines and then later some ink tense blocks as paint from a palette for the color washes. I'm using a softer inking stroke for these because the ovals drawn here are only 3 inches by 2 inches and the birds themselves are even teenier. And the paper is very soft and absorbent and it'll just drink up the ink marker and create a thick, dark, black hole of a line if I just let it sit on the paper too long. So I'm using faster, lighter dabbing strokes as I ink to prevent that. I started with a bit of diluted cool green for feather shadows, wet and wet, and then stronger green for her short tail feathers. Inktense blocks are great for the type of ornaments I paint because they dry waterproof, which means I can pour the faux resin glue finish over top without worrying about any color runs. I also like to use my waterproof Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay inks for ornament painting for the same reason. The trim on the coats will be several layers and colors, starting with yellow, then adding some tannish dark ochre, and then some accents of green to create a simple gold trim effect. I really enjoy the Mackenzie Childs brand, and I have bought a clock, some coasters, a purse, a goose appetizer platter, and a watch for my dad from this brand in the past. Since these birds are close studies of ceramic sculptures from this brand, I can't sell my original painting or sell it as prints either but my ornaments are fine for my own use or as a free gift to family or friends. If you own any sculptures, dolls, or decoration pieces, they make great instructive models for still life art if you're just practicing at home. I really love the postures of the birds, especially the rooster. He just looks so austere and regal. I think the original sculptures were made from ceramic and meant for Easter, but I've removed the Easter baskets and eggs and done the colors more Christmassy. When I did the red for the hen's crest and waddle, I made sure to leave some lighter areas around her eye and jowls for a bit of shadow depth. It's hard to be too detailed on this paper and at such a small size, and it's best to stick to simple ink and wash, but I can't help adding just a bit of shading here and there. When I started on her coat, I initially thought I'd let it be a lighter diluted pinkish red with darker red for shadows. But after I did it all that way, I decided I wanted it a deeper red base color with green for the shadows. It looks more Christmassy that way. Again, this is a delicate paper, so simpler and fewer layers is better. The soft nap of this cotton paper really helps impart a fuzzy coat look if the paint is applied in a mottled wet and wet texture.
I went back and added more green to imply more dimples in the gold trim. Various textures are just about a visual illusion. I didn't know earlier if I wanted to keep the boots with a checkered print, but I decided I did if I changed them to festive red checkers from the black. I drew on the lines following the contours of the boot both vertically and horizontally, and that means these lines will curve around the foot shape. If I made them straight, the feet would look smashed flat, and I don't want that. I didn't do gradients with the red checks, I just applied them as solid squares, but I did come back with some green to imply some shadows and a bit more complexity on the boots. I touched up the yellow beak with some red to create orange shadows, and then I'm on to Mr. Rooster. I was smarter with his crest and left some highlights, which I forgot to do for his missus. And as with her, I left some white paper highlights around his eye and in his waddle. The green, red, and gold colors are just such a classic Christmas color scheme. It never gets old during the holiday season, and it so clearly communicates the holiday mood. So he has a bit of bare leg showing above his boots, and I color that with yellow and then diluted red lines. This type of bird leg always makes me think of Big Bird from Sesame Street. The rooster's tail is far more impressive than his bride's, and it was fun to leave some highlights among the curving green feathers. Just a little thing like that can make a simple piece more fancy. And that's just blending off wet edges with a damp, clean brush to create that effect. I did the shadows on his body feathers with yellow and a bit of orange, 
So he's got a warm body cast where the hen has a cool one. And this is because her coat was red, so green shadows on her white feathers were a nice complementary juxtaposition to the coat. On him, I planned on a green coat, but he had a lot of red in his crest, waddle, and boots already, so I opted for yellow shadows on his body instead of the predictable red complement. <laughs> gold trim was created the same way for him as it was for her, with a mix of mottled yellow, dark ochre, and green colors. For his coat, I did want to keep it lower chroma, so I did a diluted green with darker green seam and shadow areas. And then the intense painting part was all done. And when I came back to these later, I added in some sparkly mica light green watercolor as the oval backgrounds for both birds and left them to dry. His background was a tad warmer and more olive, while her background was just slightly cooler and mintier. And I had prepared some oval bare wood blanks where I had glued gold organza ribbon hanging loops and some decorative lakta paper on the backs using Ranger's matte medium glue. And I went back and sanded the edges of the paper so it fit the ovals perfectly and there wasn't any overhang. Then I cut out the two bird paintings and glued them onto the front of the blanks, again using Ranger's Matte Medium. Once these were dry, I sanded the edges again so the paintings fit perfectly on the blanks. The sanding really takes it to a professional project level versus an amateur sort of like after school project. Then came the most thrilling and scary step, which is pouring a glossy dimensional glue over the top to create a faux resin or faux epoxy look. I used Ranger's non-toxic and acid-free glossy accents glue, and then I left these ornaments to dry overnight. The next morning the glue has dried and the appearance has gone from foggy to gorgeously dewy like reflective glass and it makes for such a great polished ornament. As my finishing touch, I always use colored metallic or glitter paint to paint the profiles of my ornaments as it adds a final touch of polish and it makes the ornament water resistant on all sides. So now the ornament is beautiful from all angles. It's glossy and illustrated on the front with a sparkly mica background. It has decorative paper and my signature on the back, a metallic ribbon loop at the top, and gold glittery paint on the sides for a connecting profile border. So these two hoity-toity birds look ready for any holiday party and hopefully they'll coordinate with my friend's rooster sculptures in the same style. Well wizards, hope you enjoyed learning how I make my particular type of painted ornaments. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website, link, Skillshare, and Patreon page to support my art and art channel below. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all magical art adventures. Mm -hmm.